Yo, what's up guys? What's going on? Um, sorry about the technical difficulties. It's been a crazy start, but uh, you know, we good now. We're definitely good now. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I hope this microphone works. So if you guys are able to just let me know and while we're filling up the room, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and share this live stream. I'm like across my platforms. Let me see something here. Let me close Instagram out. Because I put it on Instagram. What's going on, team? What's going on? Um, hmm, maybe it's on my... Hold on, I'm trying to share the live stream. Let me know in the comment section if uh, you guys could definitely hear me. That would be great. Let me know if you can hear me. I don't have my headphones this time. And then we're going to jump right into it. So pretty much just thanks, you guys, for rocking with me. This is This is our third and most powerful you know, live stream yet. So I wanna make sure everybody knows that. Let me, here, let me see if I can share it this way. Uh, let me see. Let me just invite a couple of people and get it started. Cause I don't know what's going on. It's not letting me share it on my other phone. There we go. What's going on team? So happy to have y'all with me. Just let, okay, bet. Thank you. So again, I just want to thank you all for rocking with me again. This is this is our third topic, and we have to break through these topics. The first topic was understanding the mind, repetition, and things like that. And then the second topic, man, it just slipped my mind. I forgot that. Oh, words or spells and how you have to watch your words. You know, we're dealing with a lot of uh, situations in today's time to where, you know, words can be spell bounding. So we definitely have to watch our words. And then I just want to let you guys know at the end of the live stream, I'm going to give away some money. So... I'll, I'll give away $25 on Cash App, and you guys will see me do that. Um, and pretty much, I appreciate you guys tuning in, and definitely more so than you guys who show your love. Shout out to the haters and the people, the nosy people who uh, who watch, but the numbers don't lie. Oh, also, so if you're not following my other page, Mind Worlds, that's like this bath salt company I'm making. This is my bath salts. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I finally got some labels. Finally got some labels for these things. And so that'll be out uh, soon. I went to sleep early because I was so like stoked about this, this stream, right? And then, uh, but I really wanted to rehearse it. So I woke up at like 4 a.m. and couldn't go back to sleep. So I've been up since 4 a.m. But it's, I, I told you it was going to be 10.30. And I just ran late getting some juice. But I'm going to sip my juice. So I'm going to put it right here so it's easily accessible. And we're really about to just jump into it, right? The untold truth of black history. Again, at the end, like be engaging as, as much as engaging. What's going on, man? Uh, be as much as engaging as possible. If you guys could share the stream and put a thumbs up and just talk to me. Uh, because at the end of the stream, I'm gonna be giving away $25, like I said. So you could be anything you wanna be online. So the only thing I wanna be, you know, more than anything is myself. So let's just jump into the untold uh, truths of black history and the attack on uh, black people today. So to understand that, uh, you really have to think spiritual warfare, right? You have to think spiritual warfare, you have to think manipulation, and you have to think possession. To understand what's happened to black people, you have to think spiritual warfare, you have to think manipulation, and you have to think uh, possession. So what's so valu valuable uh, to these entities that this is what they seek to do to, uh, as oppressing our people and things like that? Well, obviously it starts with melanin, right? So melanin is, I mean, the body is mechanics, right? We just exist in a third dimension. Our thoughts, spirituality is in the fourth dimension. We speak it into the third dimension and create reality. But when you're dealing with our body, it's just mechanics, it's just flesh, it's just ego. But what is it wrapped with? It's wrapped with melanin, right? And melanin is, the co is, is, is cosmic fiber, and it's fabric, cosmic fiber and fabric of the universe, right? It receives, it reflects, it transmits uh, information from the sun, and it feeds our DNA. That's what we have to consider, right? That's what melanin does for us. That's why when we sit, fit in, sit in a sit in the sun, we just get all these affirmations coming to us. We, we feel these tingles through our skin. We feel radiant. We feel beautiful, vibrant. We glow when we stick out in the sun. You know, that's because, you know, 
the sun is 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 very valuable. It's, it, we we can't understand it right now in our current state of science, but eventually we will. But to better like drive home the point, have you ever thought about and just manifested the sun, right? So you just set out and like, man, the sun's not shining. And as soon as you said that, here come the sun, the sun coming out, very vibrant, right? So we receive ideas from the sun, like I said, it's a, it's, a, it's a source, it's a download of information. And notice that the Bible also says that nothing is new under the sun. Why? Why does it say that, right? So when you look at the universe, the entire universe, right? The entire universe is melanated. <laughs> That's my homegirl in the comment section. I'm so glad she's joined. Like, it just threw me off. Hold on one second. The entire universe is melanated, right? And us as people, you know, especially black people, we are people of the sun. And black people, we are naturally connected to the universe, right? Black people, we, we mimic the universe. Our hair is like trees, right? Notice it just, it forms like a tree. Whether it's dreaded, whether it's vines, it's, it's draped, it just forms like a tree, right? Um, our skin is every color of the soil found on the earth, right? And our aura and our emotions, they layer just like the layers of the atmosphere. So why do I say this? I say this to drive home the point that the earth is definitely our mother. The earth is definitely our mother, right? So the Bible speaks of fallen angels and throughout the live stream, that's what we'll call these entities. We'll call them fallen angels. Um, and then science understands them as uh, as aliens. Mythology understands them as gods, you know. But when you consider uh, different entities who definitely, that's why people say, watch what you say, watch what you listen to, watch what you consume. You know, you are what you eat. These things are definitely valuable to consider. So you got these fallen angels, these, these negative entities, right? Um, you know, our creator seeded this planet and when we seeded this planet, we were, we were created and we traded with one another. So we were, cre we were created, I'm sorry, and then we created ourselves and then we traded with one another, right? So, and then we also existed for le very long times. You can also find that in different religious texts and um, mythology texts. You can find that uh, humans lived for a very long time. And then it's also said that we coexisted with the inner earthers or the Atlanteans. So think like that, but you also have these different entities that these different texts talk about, whether it's the, the Draconians, what you see in movies like Game of Thrones, and you see a, vir a, a virgin that has to be sacrificed to a dragon. Well, really, that's taken off of uh, Draconian mythology. And then you see, you hear about our, the Archons, uh, uh, beings that feed off your negative energy, so you have to protect your energy and then reptilians uh all of these are also considered aliens by the way but i, I believe in all the, i believe in this, all different aliens right but then you got reptilians who shape shift so you, you you never know who you're listening to in today in today's time right so again uh, different religious texts uh teach that you know angels or fallen angels that well, who who became fallen angels uh they were once supposed to guide and direct us, right? They were once supposed to guide and direct us, but then we see that they wanted to be worshipped. Uh, they, they created Nephilim, things like that. So these now negative, demonic, uh, um, ignorance, entrapping entities, they want control. They want the earth. They want our mother, right? So you have to consider that too. So the best way for these fallen angels to take control of the earth uh, uh I mean, the reason why they want to take over the earth, uh, I'm sorry, my notes got jumbled and I forgot to update them, um, because of the things found on the earth, right? So you got portals, you have, uh, well, it said there's like 15 different portals on earth. What's going on, Dion? Uh, and then also w water. And then you have, uh, in certain times, used as a slave class of the human race, right? So you can consider yourself a slave class, not only in slavery, but in just different times where there's lights, streams, they're definitely, you, you, can, you can feed these entities as a slave class and you have to be careful for that, right? So how, do they, how did they take over such a strong nation, Earth, right? Before the tectonic place 
shifts and all, all, all of that. Like, let's just call it Africa. How did they take over, right? Well, sticking with religion, mythology, and hieroglyphics, we learned that there was a great war that broke out in heaven, or a cosmic battle, if you will, for galactic rule, right? So if you look at Earth, right, and if you look at the solar system, you could liken it to this heavenly war as control over the galaxy. I know this sounds crazy, but I'm like dead serious. You can liken this heaven, heavenly war to control over our entire star system. So you look at Mars, it's said that Mars was once um, a luscious planet, uh, had water, um, different reservoirs and regions, but the radiation levels are through the roof, which indicates nuclear activity or war, right? Uh, the moon is, is obviously a satellite um, when you consider astronomy, but also it's a hollow moon theory that says it's really a satellite um, and the earth is trapped, all different type of things. But if you put all of these religious texts, mythology, hieroglyphics together, you got a heavenly war and you have a cosmic, over cosmic control, right? But the earth, right? Let's talk about the earth. The goal was to destabilize the earth's chakras. The goal was to destabilize the earth's chakras. And if you don't think the earth has chakras, then I'm not for you, right? Because the earth definitely has chakras. So longitude and lat latitude indicates obviously the earth has chakras, right? So look at the tectonic plate shifts. Look at the tilt of the earth's axis. And then humanity's lifespan. Again, we were talking about how humans live very long time, uh, live for very long time periods. But then it was cut down uh, to less than 100 years on average. And then we also, uh, we deal with uh, memory loss. We don't know, we, we don't have any memory of uh, these certain events that's happened. We just read about them, we just hear about them. But you have to be careful. And one person I was listening to, I think it was Hassan Campbell, shout outs to him on YouTube. He said, you're learning from the enemy. You got the enemy teaching you. So we learn everything about our history, our liberations, our, our rights. We learn that from the enemy. We, we, we don't teach ourselves, right? So pretty much all of this was an attack on our mother. Like I can't see the comment section. What's up, Eric? Or oh, I can. What's up, Eric? Um, but pretty much the earth is our mother. And we spoke about our likeness to the earth. We spoke about receiving downloads, informations, affirmations, things becoming clearer to us as we just bask and bathe in the sun, right? So now let's talk about the hackings of humans, right? The hackings of humans. All right, so number one, we learn in school, we learn in so many different ways that what? we come from monkeys, right? That we evolved from monkeys. I never told anyone I came from a monkey. So you can stop telling me that and you can stop telling my son that because I definitely don't come from a monkey, right? I come from the sun. We are children of the sun and the earth is our mother and then freedom is our birthright. We are people of the sun. The earth is our mother and freedom is our birthright. I'm not a genetically modified organism. I don't, I, don't, I don't evolve from monkeys. I'm not a Neanderthal or a caveman, right? I'm not a Neanderthal or a caveman, right? But you think of higher vibrational entities and you think of lower vibrational entities. Well, obviously lower vibrational entities can receive commands a lot easier. You can train a dog more easier than you can take away the free will and train a human, right? So let's think about the people that we've seen in today's time that show us evidence of possession, soullessness, right? No connection to the divine or awareness when they're offending nature and Mother Earth. So we look at people like Hitler, uh, Hitler Christopher Columbus, People like that. Obviously, something was wrong with those guys, right? Obviously, something was wrong with those guys. But it's all the the more the, what what do you see about the characteristics? Is you see that they're killing 
and um, desensitized. They have a desensitized regard for life, right? Whether it's human life, animal life, acts of slavery, um, high pollution rates. It's, a, it's, it's obviously no soul or awareness to what we're doing to our earth. And we have to be careful for, again, we are what we eat. We are what we consume. We have to be careful that we do not become these negative entities or allow ourselves to be possessed by them and further destroy our earth, further uh, kill each other, corrupt each other, uh, whether it's physical, uh, mental, or any type of a, abuse that we can inflict on our brothers and sisters, right? So these entities, some of them can shape shift, but some of them can't even possess our reality until they take possession of someone else. And I know I'm getting real deep, but I'm, I'm dead serious. So you, you notice you look at a person like under the influence of alcohol, or they've been listening to some music or playing this game, and then they're like, I couldn't even recognize him anymore. Was Well, the reason why you deal with that, or the reason why that takes place is because obviously they're not in control of their spirit. They're not taking hold of their spirit. Instead, they've allowed themselves to be susceptible to hacking, right? So humans, right, entering this reality, that's what we're gonna get to. Humans, we have the, the highest, and I'm saying humans, I'm going to just move on. All right, humans, we have the highest level of consciousness on earth, right? So, therefore, we are the highest vibrational beings on earth. At least that's disclosed, right? So, you get me. Um, these inorganic beings, they sought to enter our reality through possession of low, low vibrational beings. Again, like, you can give a command to a dog. Well, someone who understands the way that thought works, understands that, we speak things to existence, the power of words, the power of the tongue. Those same people obviously know how to possess today, whether it's the music industry, whether it's dopamine releases through social media and things like that, right? So you have to be careful again that, uh, you know, you are what you consume, whether it's music, food, pleasure. It makes you susceptible for your spirit to be hacked. Um, to carry out actions. I'm sorry um, if, if you hear people in the background. I'm definitely in a public space right now. Um, so I'm going to move on so I won't lose my point. So once hacked, uh, these beings begin to manipulate and oppress. So once you're dealing with manipulation and oppression, then you obviously see the hiding of other texts, right? The control of... Uh, whether it's through religion or the whitewashing through Egyptian culture or the messing up of African traditions through slavery and genocide. So, um, or ethnic groups internationally. It's more than just slaves that genocide was committed against. But once these entities are able to possess and able to manipulate, now they can oppress you. They can possess them and oppress you, the children of the sun, right? They can possess them and oppress you. So you have these low vibrational beings killing life, cutting the lungs of the earth, depleting our oxygen level, destroying our ozone levels. And now they're able to possess these beings who think in a lower state of existence, a more barbaric primal state of existence. And then they use them to oppress you, the children of the sun. Right? Okay. So we're gonna move on. So now I'm finna give you the game. I'm finna give you the game how you switch from the manipulation and possession to slavery, right? So at first these again we're gonna call them fallen angels because that's what we can that's what we can better understand. These fallen angels that manipulated and possessed these entities to oppress you. Alright? So at first these fallen angels they fooled us into us thinking that they were our saviors, you know, through trade that was foreign to us. You know, they probably might bring you some shoes and you might give them some yams or, you know, you might teach them how to fish and how to cultivate a crop differently uh, for exchange of a gun um, or something that you might not need in your community, right? So you look at people like Amerigo Vespucci, 
uh, Christopher Columbus, Hitler, we spoke about them. And people like them, they offered us gifts in exchange for trade. So now we're finna jump over to the kings in Africa, right? So I, I believe it was Ethiopian. You can fact check me on this. But I think it was like the 17 to 1800s when you were dealing with kings. I'm, I'm about to like dive into the term of my nigga, right? So in Africa, Negus, N-I-G-U-S, Negus is divine one or king. So you might be talking to a king and you might be saying, my niggas, my nigga, like what you want me to do? You want me to go take the army out? You, what do you want me to do? My niggas, right? So then you have German, you have German settlers, you know, German tradesmen that stop in Africa and they, they can't say Negus. They can't address a king as Negus, right? So they call him a Niger, right? So you get the N-I-G-U-S and you replace it with the N-I-G-E-R, Niger, right? African word for an Ethiopian king, right? Or something like that. Just fact check that one too. So now you're dealing with slavery and you get the extra G and now you deal with nigga. So you can't let anybody take like the origin of these words from you and how you use them. Obviously, you want to use that word with divinity and not oppression. But, you know, that, that word originates from us. It doesn't originate from an oppressor. All right. Um, so slavery. Let's get into slavery. Right. So we spoke about the the, the trade. So Africa was number one. White people were not the first people to get involved with slavery by no means. They were like the 11th to 13th colony, like um, Europeans and English were one of the latest colonies to get involved with slavery, right? You have to understand that Africa was ambushed and violated from all sides. Africa was ambushed and violated from all sides, from the Arabs, the French, the Spanish, the British, the English, the Chinese, right? But first, the Arabs started the enslavement of black people between um, 650 and 1900 AD, right? So the Libyan slave uh, trade started over 2,000 years ago, pretty much at this point, right? And it still exists today. Over 20 million enslaved Africans by the Arabs and then another 20 million uh, through the Trans-Saharan slave route. So you got 40 million people. Yep. And the Caribbeans. Yep. Um, so roughly through uh, roughly 250,000. Let me let me let me share with you like how bad we were violated by the by the slave trade between 650 and, and 1900 AD. You had 250,000 mixed offspring of raped slaves that were turned and formed into an army to further penetrate Africa. Like you gotta understand, that's some of the things that has happened to our people, right? And then you have uh, you have uh, the second uh, biggest slave trade, which was the Spanish-Portugal slave trade between 1492 and 1663 AD. And then third was the European slave trade between 1555 and 1863 AD, right? What made it easier besides this oppression and working with different groups to entrap slaves? It was disease and zoonotic pathogens, kind of like a, a, a repeatance of what we see today. It was a disease and zoonotic pathogens that made it easier to conquer Africa, right? So now you have black people enslaved Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right about that, Dion. All right, so, um, all right, I was about to say, all right, so now you have enslaved people. Dion, please stick around to the end because I, really I really want you to be one of the people that win for real. All right, so now you have enslaved people that have had enough, and now I'm going to tell you something. This is where your power lies, and this is what they 
don't want you to know. You are a warrior class. You're not a conqueror class. We don't seek to conquer and rule over every part of the earth. We just seek to trade and love each other, like vibrate, dance uh, to music, right? Not just to music, but you get what I'm saying. But we're not a conquering species, but we're a warrior race, right? We're not a conquering class, but we're a warrior class, right? So now you're dealing with the Gullah Wars, right? Now the Gullah Wars, for, for those of you that don't know, this is where black people revolted against slavery. And it was through 1739 uh, to 1853. And what you have to understand is cowboys versus Indians was really cowboys versus black people, right? And people of color. So Native Americans were black people. I'm not going to argue with you on that. I'm not going to debate you on that. But Native Americans are black people. Look, look up black native tribes if you don't believe me and you will see exactly what I'm talking about look up black native tribes and you'll see I just dropped my phone but I can't get it uh, but it, that's why when you see certain groups of black people you see their hair look just like a native American well there you go um, but native Americans again like there were black people and black people were native to America before the industrialization of slavery. Native Americans were black people and black people were native to America before the industrialization of slavery, right? So some black natives were so black that they were called indigos, which the, basically calling them blue black. So that tells you how black some natives um, of America were. So slaves ran from the North, right? This is what history doesn't, what doesn't teach. Slaves ran from the north and off of plantations to meet up with the Seminole Indians. Seminole means fugitive. Seminole means fugitive, go look it up. With the Seminole in Indians, right? And they freed themselves throughout America in a 119 year war against slavery, right? So they would run off plantations, they would run from the north, they would run from everywhere, and they would meet up with these Indians and in larger groups to free themselves off of plantation, off of plantations, right? Just like Harriet Tubman. But our numbers were stronger than history allows us to see. Or the history that you don't have to look for allows us to see, right? So slaves and natives, they joined forces and they created a stronghold in the South, right? Uh, and at this point, you pretty, want, pretty much want to give shout outs to Mexicans too, because they gave us guns to fight Europeans after they were oppressed. You got to understand, Mexico controlled California and, te and Texas, right? So to show you how powerful we are and how oppressed you are because they don't want you to know that you can do this again, we fought from Florida all the way up into Canada, from Florida all the way up into Canada. So as we fought our ways off of plantations throughout the Gullah Wars, not only did we fight from Florida to, all the way up to Canada, we defeated the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Army in taking our freedom back. We worked with the Mexicans because they were oppressed, the Indians because they were oppressed, and we got our freedom back. Right? It's more than just, oh, the presidency had a change in heart, and, it, and it's the people who just really don't like you that look just like you, and that's of your community, that we, 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 we took you off their land, right? Yeah, right? That came from you. Your freedom came from you, right? So why is this not taught? Because if you freed yourself once, what's stopping you from doing it again? If you freed yourself once, what's stopping you from doing it again? Those of you who are just now joining, we, 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 hear, we were taught that the Civil War is how we gain freedom as slaves, right? But that's not true, and I'm about to share with you why. But at first, look up the Gullah Wars, G-U-L-L-A-H. That's how we gained our freedom. We met up with Seminole Indians, fugitive Indians, we met up with Mexicans after they were oppressed. 
So we met up with all these oppressed groups and we took our freedom back, right? And the reason why this is not publicly taught is because we did it once so we can do it again, right? So they want you to believe that you were terrorized until they decide to free you and that's not true. You didn't stand up for that and you made sure it didn't happen. So Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863. The Gullah Wars took place between eight, uh, 1739 in 1858, um, but Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 because white communities were tired of being collateral damage of the war against slavery. So you have these community members just like you have them today. You have these community members just like you. Thank you, thank you for putting that in the comment section. So you have these community, like you look at these riots. No, we stand with Black Lives Matter. No, I'm not saying that the reason why white people standing with us today was because, oh, they're, they're scared of us or they don't want us to do anything to them. That's not what I'm saying. You have people who genuinely love us. You have people who genuinely want to work with us and want, uh, want certain systems to consider us equal to them. We already are, but they're fighting with us by our side. They're fighting the same battle we are against our oppressors. But uh, the reason why it was a shift when, we, when you didn't have rights for you to be free was because the people who did have rights were tired of being collateral damage. Because these Indians, like these movies show us as savages throughout these times, they were swiping through the land, man, woman, child. Everybody was getting it. The cattle, the dogs, everybody was getting it. Um, as people were being liberated off plantations. So again, you have people who had the right to vote, stand up, when they were tired of being uh, of being collateral damage to what was done in their communities. So now you have the Jim Crow era, right? But well, first, let me stop and pause here. Let's talk about the Democratic and Republican Party. Number one, and we're going to talk about why segregation ended. But number one, the Democratic Party is this. The Democratic Party used to be a very racist party. And as a matter of fact, Mostly black people started the Republican Party so that they could have a voice in their minority communities, right? So then you have the Jim Crow era where black people lost their voice and lost the knowledge of how to move throughout the political arena. But again, black people started the Republican Party. We're about to speak to why that changed. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and jump into it. It changed in segregation, right? So during, during you've got to understand that segregation and the Great Depression existed at the same time. America was dealing with the Great Depression. You were dealing with the Great Depression and segregation. All right. So when you end segregation, what does that do for the black dollar? What does that do for America with the black dollar? It boosts the economy. We were already dealing with a depression, a, 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 a depression period. Imagine separating black and white dollars in today's time. What would that do for the economy of America, right? Okay, so now we're gonna take a step back. So now we're dealing with Jim Crow and the destruction of black leadership. So the Emancipation Proclamation made it uh, illegal uh, to own a slave, right? And then the Jim Crow period was, all right, so we have the Emancipation Proclamation signed in 1863 in 1870, you have the start of the Jim Crow period. You only have seven years of, okay, it's finally over, until you start being hung from trees and limbs. It just makes me very mad. But anyway, the Jim Crow period started in 1870, and it ended in the mid-1900s. We spoke about elite families and classes of parties. What's going on, family? What's going on? We spoke about elite classes and parties and families, right? So let's speak about the Rockefellers. Bro, I love you. My guy, good to have you here. So let's speak about the Rockefellers. So the Rockefellers, and you can look this up, they funded the KKK. All right? The Rockefellers funded the KKK. Not only did they fund the KKK, guess who else they funded? Martin Luther King. Why would they fund Martin Luther King when they already fund the KKK? 
because less than 20 years ago, yeah, I'm gonna speak it, bro. Less than 20 years ago, we were fighting a 119 year war called the Gullah Wars, where we ran through villages for our freedom and liberating our people. So if the Rockefellers funded MLK, why did that, what was MLK's message then? MLK's message was to convince black people not to fight back. Because again, look at what we did in the Gullah Wars right, right before, seven years before the Jim Crow period, right? Look at what we did in the Gullah Wars. So black people were convinced to turn a blind eye to domestic terrorism. And appointed leaders' pockets were greased to keep us docile and submissive. That's why I don't really, I never, I never really connected with uh, Martin Luther King. I always connected, connected with Malcolm X. So when Martin Luther King got smart, and why did he get smart? Because of the influence of Malcolm X. Because when those brothers sat down and talked, they were able to really see him. And, and Martin Luther King said, I realize I'm le I led my people into a burning building. Which is the same thing I was telling you guys last time that you got to watch your words. And now we're doing the same burning and building, chanting, I can't breathe. But then I had to tell you that words are spells. I showed you in the first live stream that re repetition and uh, certain effects can take hold of your mind after trauma. And then your words are spells. So you're dealing with trauma and then you're putting spells on yourself. And now I'm telling you that, the re that, that you were taught to turn a blind eye to domestic terrorism. And, the, and taught to be docile and submissive, right? Because you already got your freedom. freedom. Yeah, this is real fact, facts. You already took your freedom back during the Gullah Wars, right? All right. So, but Martin Luther King had a change of heart, and then he said he, real, he got smart. So, when he got smart, they offed him, right? They offed Martin Luther King when he got smart, and they convinced the Nation of Islam, the NOI, to off Malcolm X for leading black people properly. So now I'm finna give you a bonus. I already said it once, but I'm gonna say it again. The Great Depression and segregation existed at the same time. The only reason segregation ended was to boost the American economy. And guess who voted on that? The Democratic Party. Guess who voted on that? The Democratic Party. So that is when you saw the shift for it appearing that Democrats stood up for black people more than Republicans, which is where we lost our political history and accepted that the Republican Party is a racist party and the Democratic Party is the good party. But then you don't pay attention to politics anymore until your vote is demanded. And then you forget that all these crime bills took you out of your community, took your ability to procreate with the black woman and have man, woman, and child out of your community. So you have to consider these things, but I'm not done, we're about to get there, all right? So after the 12 year Great Depression, all right, um, segregation was ended, all right? So the introdu introduction of drugs in our community, you have black leadership that has been taken out of our community. So what filled it? The music industry, and drug influence. The music industry and drug influence followed right behind. Uh, oh yeah, dog. Put on a big speaker then. Play me loud, dog. And shout outs to you. King Marvio. He said he got me on the big speaker. So shout outs to King Marvio. And I hope you hear me on the big speaker, dog. Hey. No, but anyway. Um, once you take black leadership out of the community, you can replace it with, with influence and drugs. So Malcolm X and Martin Luther King that were killed in the 60s, right? After the destruction of black leadership in our community, cocaine was introduced. Cocaine was used to fund the Vietnam War. You gotta understand that the Vietnam War took place between 1955 and 1975, right? What was their community doing during the Vietnam War? They were saying that they didn't support the war. So what was used to fund the Vietnam War when the elitists were in a country when the American people didn't approve of? 
I'm going to back up real quick. You got the CIA being formed at the same time, right? But the CIA started to flood black communities with the coke. With the money from the drug war, they funded the Vietnam War under President Nixon. Why? Because the elitists were in Vietnam without the support of the American people. So now you need somebody to fund this war. The American citizens refused to fund the war and support the Vietnam War, right? So CIA was formed September 18, 1947. It said that they were partially formed to further dismantle and destroy the blacks from rebelling again. It said that they were uh, partially formed to further dismantle and destroy black people from rebelling again. So scientifically speaking, if we want to talk about drugs for a minute, scientifically speaking, black people have a higher dopamine tolerance level. Black people have a higher dopamine tolerance level. What word do you get from dopamine? Dope. So we have a higher level for dope, right? We have a higher level towards addiction, right? So it takes more. Well, actually, it takes less. I'm sorry. Um, so our genetic structure makes it easier for us to get addicted because our dopamine levels are so high. So now you have coke, crack, and codeine. Now you have coke, crack, and codeine as a sedative in our community. So drug violence, new criminal. So, so what does this bring? Coke, crack, and codeine in our community. It brings, it, it, shout outs to everybody joining. Yeah, they use music because they know that's what moves our soul. You are so right about that. You are so right about that. I didn't, I, I didn't, I, I didn't think about they used it to move our soul, but I do know that vibrational frequency can create or destroy molecular structure, right? Um, so now you have coke, crack, and codeine, which is a sedative in our community. So what does that bring us? That brings us the favorite thing everybody loves to watch, which is power, right? It brings you drug violence. It brings you new criminal enterprises. It brings you prostitutions. It brings you pimps. It brings you child abuse. While you have these pimps, drug dealers, and prostitutes on the streets, their children are being abused. You have crackheads throughout the communities because our level of dopamine and our, our tolerance level is higher, so it's easier for us to get addicted. So guess what? The funds from the drug war help lead the way to reform and create the prison uh, industrial complex. So you have to understand, again, this goes back to manipulation. This goes back to manipulation of our community. This goes back to, to uh, a, 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 a oppression. This, this is legislation. This is legislation. You have trade, trade dries up because you really don't have anything to give. Then you have bondage and slavery. Then you have gullah wars because we can't take it anymore. Then you have black leadership. Uh, no, then you have Jim Crow era. Then you have segregation and black leadership, the destruction of black leadership. And now you have drugs. And now you have drugs. So now once you take, like, you know how they say, oh, what would Martin Luther King say if he was here today? Well, he would say that this is legislation. He would say this is systemic oppression. He would say this is cabalism. He would say this is deep state agenda. That's on the next slide. We'll talk about that later. So white people do not teach their kids to sip lean. Thank you so much, Trap Goddess 420. White people do not teach their kids to sip lean. They don't teach their kids to turn tricks. And they don't teach their kids to pop pills and kill each other. Our children need to know that we shouldn't do this and that these activities lead to death and that these activities are lower, they lower our frequency and our vibrational spirit, allowing for spirit possession. I don't know if you guys saw that dude, but now it's got me looking over my shoulder. The next time I go in this Chinese restaurant, next time I go in this Italian restaurant, give me a quick sandwich and I'm standing next to somebody I don't know and he look like, he had a bad day, and then he pull out a gun and just start boom, boom, boom. You can't tell me that's not spirit possession. 
You can't tell me that's not a possessed spirit. Right? So, we talked about the drugs, but now let's talk about alcohol. Everybody's favorite thing to do on the weekend, right? But I need to talk to y'all about this alcohol. Now, lately, I got I to gotta admit, ever since I moved down to Texas, I've been drinking a lot more. But I, I try to watch it. But when it comes down to this alcohol, let's get let's share this to a little bit more people. If y'all can share this for me, go ahead and share this for me, man. I'm going to share this to as many people as I know because, really, I just want some love on this stream. Let's keep this done shared. All right. We're going to share. Uh, I'm going to finish up these D's and then there we go. I'm going to send it like that. Outrageous love. Outrageous love. So again, we talked about these activities, but now let's speak about alcoholism and spirits. You go to the liquor store, you drive past the on the highway, what does it say? It say wine and spirits, right? Mm, wine and spirits. So wine and spirits equals possession. Spirits equal possession, right? So studies have proven, and you can look this up, it was a study done in India. But studies prove, uh, proved demonic possession takes place when you are under the influence of alcohol. Uh, this study was uh, the, the people who were studied, they were strapped up like their, their hey, Brie, their, their, their brains were strapped up. And um, when they consumed alcohol, uh, they felt negative energy distress being under the influence of alcohol. I'm pretty sure everyone feels negative energy distress under being under the influence of spirits. Negative energy possession, and you've been drinking spirits all night. People have convulsions, they black out, they throw up, they become violent. Sounds like an exorcism to me. But anyway, this scientifically confirms that your soul is weakened and open up to possessions when you drink. So, one of the things we're really going to look at to close this out is White House corruption. So, after delivering drugs into our community, uh, they started the war on drugs to throw us in modern day slavery. After delivering drugs into our community, they started the war on drugs to throw us in modern day slavery. Black people were used to finance war and industrialized prison. Black people were used to finance war and industrialized prison, right? And then you have various crime bills that again, use black people to invest in the industrialization of the prison industry, right? So on summary, there was a great attack on mother. I don't care what anybody believes, but I definitely believe that that heavenly war did something to the tectonic place of earth and caused it to shift and to be like that instead of like this. I do, I do believe that the war that they talk about in the Bible caused the tectonic place to shift. I'm sorry, the tectonic place to shift and the earth's axis to tilt. I do believe that that heavenly war or this cosmic war over control over our galaxy and our solar system. I do believe that that war had to take place for black people to be oppressed and for negative entities to possess lower vibrational beings. I do believe that that took place. And I do believe that that's why we are oppressed today. I do believe that we're children of the sun. And I do believe that the world is lying in the power of the wicked one. And when the Bible says that the world is lying in the power of the wicked one, it describes it. But we can add a little bit more detail from what we've learned from other texts and from other uh, history that's not so publicly told. We can, we, we can learn that we are definitely, we can confirm that the Bible is true when it says we're children of the Son, right? And then after the attack on our mother, we were enslaved. We dealt with civil rights. I mean, a civil war where we took our freedom. Then we dealt with civil rights where we gained our rights. I believe and I know that our religious leaders were killed. Drugs were then flooded through our community. And then it became a war on drugs. And I do believe 
that White, White House corruption further persecutes us with these crime bills that have been passed to keep us persecuted. And now today, we're dealing with police brutality. But what we have to think about is what's next. I know we want to ride right now. I know we want to we want to be mad right now. But until we got a plan for what you're going to do with this country, you really going to have to plan for what's next. Because everything we do, we're being studied and tracked. Everything we do, we're being studied and tracked. And if you break this country enough without a plan for reformation, then you can face martial law. I guarantee you, if our current president didn't have the views that he has on vaccines, and we were dealing with Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden and all these people who want to take your guns. Taking your guns away, bro. Taking your guns away is taking your rights away. Any president that tells you, any potential president that tells you they want to take your firearms away, that's, that's, a, that's a bad sign. Because that's your ability to protect yourself if need be. And again... We have to be careful for, for what's coming next, whether it's mandatory vaccines, martial law, a race war, heart, plagues. You got to think about these things. Look at China. Study these other nations during this time because our next topic, again, is, is deep state. But I want to I wanna speak about what we have to do right now, what we have to do. And what's great is I got the most people watching my stream right now than I've had. And it's only like nine people. But one day I'm going to have like a thousand people on here. <laughs> but right now I got the most people watching it. So now I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do. The most important part of the stream. Number one, we have to recognize the value of members of our community. Man, woman, and child, man. We have to recognize, and, 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 and other groups, of course. We have to recognize the value and the strong point of each one in our community thank you so much love we have to recognize the value of each one in our community we have to uphold black women for who they are right i really want to talk about about black women right now and i'm sitting up no, i'm serious we're portals we're portals we speak and we thought and spirituality exists in the fourth dimension we live in the third dimension. We're portals. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Hey, that's my OG right there. Y'all need to look up my OG. D-Boy204. Shout out to Philly, man. We connected everywhere. Shout out to Philly. And I'm thinking about the days we spent in Atlanta, bro. You definitely my brother. But we have to uphold black women, right? So we're portals, right? We pull from the fourth dimension when we pray to God, right? A prayer uttered is, is pretty much useless, right? It's within. When we pray to God, when we pull from the fourth dimension, when we, when we think, when we think about spirituality, when we think and then we manifest within the third dimension, we're dealing with portals because we're interdimensional, right? But when it comes to black women, not only are they fertile, and valued in the process towards procreation. But they're also fertile, you know, towards manifestations of reality. A black woman can manifest reality quicker for you. That's why I keep a lot of female friends around me. I don't really deal too much with men because we're more of a action energy. We don't have this this emotional, spiritual energy that you find more in women, right? So this empathy, this emotional energy, this spirituality that we find in women, we can use that towards manifesting our reality. We should be working with our black woman to manifest reality. And I'm talking, I know I'm saying, I'm, I'm talking about black women, but I'm addressing black men. We should be working with our black woman 
to manifest reality because the fertility of a black woman not only brings us life, but it also brings life to what we're trying to manifest based off how we treat those around us. Again, women have feminine energy and this feminine energy is empathy, emotion, and spirituality. Men have this logical, mechanical, action type energy, but we need both of these energies to, to, to get through these times. And they're both so valuable uh, and not easily compartmentalized. It's more universal. So, you know, and then when it comes to black men, well, ladies, support us. Shine our armor, man. We're going to need our armor. So help us shine. You know, um, hold us up. And y'all been, let me tell you something. I am so proud of how black women have been supporting black men. More than I can say of how black men have been supporting black women. Very disgusted in the music right now. I can't look at my phone and see violence against women and then play music that calls women a hoe or a bitch or all these other words. I, I really can't do that anymore. I can't. I can't look at women like in today's time. And I, I, I might be talking out my neck. Let me grab my phone real quick. Oh yeah. But what I'm saying is I can't look at women in today's time and be like, Man, yeah, I want to smash. Like, <laughs> during these times, I've been, my encounters with women have been like, hey, sister, hey, black queen, divine woman, how you doing? How's everything going? You know, during these times, we really can be, as men, like, your son need a haircut? I'm about to go take my son and get a haircut. Oh, uh, you know, you might want a hot plate. You might be working in an apartment, you see these guys standing on the corner, they making a couple plays. You dealing with unemployment, but you the best cook in the neighborhood. Go cook for them. Like, sell hot plates. You know, it's so many ways we can uphold and uplift each other right now and use each other's energy to raise our vibration instead of lowering our vibration and being susceptible to being hacked. Another thing black people need to do at this time, I know I'm giving you a history lesson, but you need to have personal history lessons and studies for yourself and with your children. Make your child give, take a five question quiz at the dinner table on why Rosa Parks was important. Uh, or, or, or when you're looking at the black dollar, right? Um, during the Great Depressional period, during sharecropper period, d during all these different periods of times, where we had to stick closer together. It might be the time where we need to, um, to study what we can do to survive these times. How, how, how did black families come out on top after the Great Depression, after segregation? How did black families come out on top after World War II, World War I? The, this is, these are things that we definitely need to be studying at this time so we can survive through these days. So again, support, prepare, you know, stack up on your canned goods, stack up on your ammo. If you can't shoot, make sure somebody in your family who can and can be within you within minutes, has a firearm, you know, study the word of God, you know, don't listen to this music and this low vibrational energy. Yeah, this is a real conversation. That's all we having. That's all we having, family. So look, um, I got 44 seconds left in this stream, so I'm gonna peel through it. Uh, so at this time, I'm about to count up the person who left the most comments. Um, and that person is gonna win $25 starting now. All right, so I got one, two, one, one, two, and you got three comments, one, two, all right, Liddy, how many you got? You got two comments, three comments, four comments. All right. Trap Goddess, you got three.